When growing giant pumpkins in the Midwest, it's not uncommon to encounter cool spring weather. Uh, in order to give your plants a good start, it's helpful to set up a temporary greenhouse. I'm going to talk a little about how to do that today. Basically what I have here is a wooden framework. It's uh, made up of a 4x4 post in the center and two 2x4s on the ends. They're 8 foot long posts driven 2 feet into the ground. Across the top I have two 10 foot 2x4s and then uh, across this frame I take two 10 foot lengths of half inch PVC pipe, couple them at the top, and I use uh, electrical conduit clamps to secure them to the top of the 2x4s. The ends of the PVC pipe then slide onto pieces of rebar which are driven into the ground on an angle to form a, a rib cage archway. On top of this I'll put uh, sheets of greenhouse plastic and uh, have openings in each end to allow wind flow if it gets too warm. And uh, I'll leave these up for a period of about four weeks. And uh, usually I'll get uh, about two extra weeks worth of growth on the plants by keeping these up. It helps uh, keep the temperature a good 20 to 25 degrees warmer inside the greenhouse. So we're inside the greenhouse and at this point we're going to assume that you've all germinated your seeds and they're ready for transplant into the greenhouse. So I'm going to do a little demonstration to show you how we do that. First I'll give you a look at our seedlings. These are two plants that are at the right size for transplanting. So we'll be getting those in the ground shortly. But first we want to prepare the holes that we're going to be planting them in. And I'll go through step by step and show you the ingredients we'll be using. Okay, so there are a few things we want to put into the hole uh, that we plant our pumpkins in to help get them incorporated and, and growing well in the ground. Uh, the first is a product called Mycos 30, which is from RTI. And uh, this basically is a, a product that uses mycorrhizal fungi and uh, some fertilizer. And the purpose of the mycorrhizal fungi is to help convert nutrients into a form that the plants can absorb more easily. Uh, they're a living fungus and they grow along the root hairs of the roots of the pumpkin. So we'll put some of that into our hole. In addition to that, I also like to use a pinch of Azos, uh, also from RTI. And this is a product that uh, has a nitrogen fixing bacteria. And what that means is that, that it will draw nitrogen out of the air and lock it up in a form that the plant can absorb as well. Good, good to get the green growth started in our plants. Nitrogen is important for that. In addition, I'm going to put something called diatomaceous earth in the ground. And the purpose of this product is to protect the plant from some pests that we encounter in cool soil in the spring. Uh, any kind of grubs that burrow through the soil and, and attack the root systems. Basically, this is just the silica shells that are left over for microscopic organisms. And uh, silica is like glass, so they're, they're very small, sharp objects that will uh, injure and kill these creatures as they crawl through the ground towards your roots. So it's a protective barrier, it's all natural. And uh, these are the, the basic things I like to start off with. Okay, one last product we have is called Root Shield. This is also a type of fungi that helps prevent harmful fungi from attacking the plant. So it's another uh, product that will put up a barrier to protect your seedlings. All right. I like to dig my hole a bit larger than needed so that I'm able to mix uh, some of these products in a little larger area of the soil and uh, the root system will grow into it. All right, so got our hole dug. The first thing I'm going to do is 
add some of my diatomaceous earth. And what I'll do is sprinkle, oh, a couple tablespoons in the hole. And then I'll also sprinkle a couple tablespoons on the dirt that I've removed from the hole so that when we put it back in, it's mixed into everything. This will be our barrier for any burrowing grubs. And we'll also take a couple of teaspoons of the mycos, sprinkle it in the hole, and on top of the soil that we're going to add to the hole. I'll use a little less of the azos initially, probably a teaspoon or less. And these, are, these organisms are living, and they will reproduce on their own. So it, it's not necessary to put a ton of them in there. They will reproduce, so you don't need to use a lot. Again, maybe a teaspoon or so of the root shield. Okay, then I'm going to mix this up a little bit. So now we've got our nice healthy plant ready to go in the hole. Add a little more soil here, and we'll want to plant this just about as deep as it was in the pot, maybe a little deeper. I like to turn the plant so that it has a slight tilt in the direction you want it to run when it vines. So I'll plant it at a little bit of an angle to make sure it's already leaning in that direction. Some people like to mound their pumpkins. I, I personally don't. I don't feel that there's enough of an advantage and, and there may be disadvantages in dry, hot conditions. So we've got our pumpkin planted and we'll give it a drink of water. Also, you want to make sure to label your pumpkins. I have a stick here. This is a seed uh, taken from my 1135 pound pumpkin of last year. So we'll put this, this marker in the ground so that we can keep track of which plant is which when it comes time to do pollination. Okay, so we've got our plant planted and at this point the most important things we need to pay attention to are keeping it well watered and uh, keeping the temperature optimal in the greenhouse. If it's a hot day we may need to vent the greenhouses and open them up and allow more airflow. If it's really cold we'll actually close our vents and tape them down uh, to trap as much heat as possible. Okay, we'd like to keep the temperature in our greenhouse about 85 degrees. Uh, we may need to raise our vents to allow airflow if the temperature outside is too warm. We may need to close them if the temperature is too cool. It's good to have a thermometer inside to let you know where the temperature is. Uh, and we'll leave the greenhouse up for roughly a month and we'll see how the plant does.